What's the median? What's the median? Five. Okay. Um, be smart about this. They have this listed in columns that have ten in each column. If you have a hundred uh, data points, then halfway is of course fifty. But remember, it, that's one of those cases where you don't have the exact number. Okay, fifty, fifty-one. You gotta find the average. Well, they're the same thing. So the median is five. So the question that asks, how does the mean compare to the median? Well, the mean is slightly less than the median. Okay, so the median. Uh, is five. The mean is slightly less. Does anybody remember, maybe from Math 1, if you did some statistics then, uh, what that means uh, about your data? No. no? I don't know how much I'll did in Math 1. If the mean is slightly less or is less than the median, then that means your data is skewed to the left. It means that you've got more um, lower values on the left side, it's bringing down your mean from the median. Now, in this case, there's not much skewing because 4.9941, that's really close to 5, um, especially when you're talking about measuring in grams. Uh, most, you know, unless you have a very precise scale, most scales don't even go to four decimals after uh, four grams. Um, so there's not a lot of skewing, but there is a little bit of skewing uh, to the left. Okay. Um, now it asks which of the following is the standard deviation. Okay, which of the following is the standard deviation? Now uh, there is a way to calculate standard deviation by hand. It is a very lengthy process. Let me tell you, it is a very lengthy process. Um, so and I also don't really want to take the time to type in all 100 values here into our calculator. So I'm just going to tell you that the standard deviation is that second one. It is 0 0.0551 grams. Now, if I wasn't just telling you the value, uh, you would need to put it in your calculator. Um, I showed you last week the summary statistics. Okay, if you have uh, data in your list, then you go over to calculate. It's that very first option, one bar stats, one variable stats, and you press enter. Now, I don't have anything in my table, so it won't do it. Um, but your standard deviation, remember I told you was the, uh, it was the S. It, it was like SX, and we'll look at that here in a little bit. Um, okay, so it says on a copy of the histogram, which you have right there, Mark points along the horizontal axis that correspond to the mean, one standard deviation above the mean, one standard deviation below the mean, two above, two below, three above, and three below. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that on uh, everybody's paper here. So the mean is just, it, it's really, really close there to the five. Okay, um, that's our mean. So it wants one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below. So I need to take my mean, 4.9941, and I need to add my standard deviation of 0 0.0551. And I get 5.0492. So looking at my scale here, I would think that that would be a lot closer to 5, but if you look at the scale, um, it's actually uh, quite a distance. Here would be one standard deviation above. If I subtract that, second enter will bring up what I just typed in, and I can change that to a minus sign. 4.939, well, let's see here, 9692, so 94, it's about right here. And I can do two above and two below by just multiplying my standard deviation by two. So two below is 4.8839. So about right here is minus two standard deviations. Uh, 5.10. About right here is plus two standard deviations. And if 
we do three. Three is actually off our charts. It's 5.1594. Let's see if minus three is on there. Okay, I am doing this for you right now, but this is something that you are going to have to do by yourself. It is also off the charts, minus three standard deviations. It's 4.8288. Now, most of the time, our data, uh, we will be able to graph plus three and minus three standard deviations. It's just for this specific set of data, um, the way they scaled it, uh, we did not. Okay? Um, now, actually, let me go back and write down some of these numbers because we're going to need it for the next part. Uh, 5.1043. Mm, Should have written it down while I was doing it. Okay, now, the reason why I wrote down these numbers here on my graph are because if you look at the uh, next question at part D, it says what percentage of the weights in the table are uh, above are within one standard deviation of the mean? within two standard deviations, and within three standard deviations. So uh, the histogram obviously here would be hard to calculate those numbers exactly because we don't know, okay, so exactly how many in this bar right here are, you know, less than this value. So that's why we have the table. Um, and it's great that the table is in order. So the first one says how many are within one standard deviation and when it says within one standard deviation, that means one above and one below. So you need to look at the table and you need to count and see how many uh, of your values are between 4.939. So let's see here, the closest value that we have to that is 4.94, right? Because 4.93 would be less than 4.93. And um, less than 5.0492, so we need to include all the 5.04s, okay? You need to count up how many values are between these two marks that I just made. Okay, you need to count and uh, figure out the percent. Okay, you need to figure out the percent there. Uh, so again, be smart. Don't count all those numbers. In fact, if you have how many And then how many do we have from the other two? Partial seven. So we have 67. So out of 100, that's 67%. Okay, so plus or minus one standard deviation, we had 67%. Then it asks for within two standard deviations. Well, let's find those numbers here. Uh, 4.8839, so we need to extend it to there. Let me use a different color. Extend it to right there, and plus two standard deviations is 5.1043, so extend it to right there. So uh, what would be easier to count? How many are not included? down here, three up there, so if I were excluded, that means there's 95 between those two values. So within two standard deviations, we had 95%, and if we extend it to uh, three standard deviations, what happens? It's all up a minute. It's all of them because our three standard deviations were completely off the chart. The chart had all of our values in it, so 100% of 
of our data with, was within uh, three standard deviations of the mean. Now, uh, we'll find out in the next couple of questions that that's a little unusual. Um, so let's look at question E. Suppose you weigh a randomly chosen nickel from this collection, find the probability that its weight would be within two standard deviations of the mean. Well, we just figured out how many were within two standard deviations of the mean, right? It was 95%. Uh, now, you can, you can express that in different ways. You can express probabilities as percents, or usually we do probabilities as fractions, right? So let's do 95 out of 100 and see how that simplifies. 19 out of 20 would be the probability there. 95 out of 100, which is equal to 19 out of 20. So pretty high probability, um, which you know, 95% kind of gave that away as well. Okay, so let's keep going. Um, on your paper there, I have a place for you to, uh, I have an X bar, I have S, I have this weird looking U and this weird looking O. Okay, the U is the Greek letter of mu. Okay, uh, and the weird looking O is the Greek letter <coughs> sigma. They're the lowercase versions. Um, X bar is the mean of a sample population. That's what we're going to deal with. Okay, that's what we're going to deal with the majority of the time. Uh, because most of the time we can't find the mean of an entire population. Like we're not going to go out and weigh every single nickel that exists in the world. Right? We're going to have a, a select sample population of it. Um, S stands for the standard deviation of a sample population. So same deal. Okay. So we're going to be using the English <coughs> letters, so to speak. Those are the ones we need to use off the rack calculators. You don't have to worry about the Greek letters. Now, we do want you to know what they mean, what they stand for. A lot of times you will be given mu or sigma. They will give you those values because uh, sometimes they are used in calculations. Um, you will be given those values. Uh, but those are the mean and standard deviation of the higher population. Okay. So we're focusing on the English letters, but you do need to know what the Greek letters mean. Okay, so we're talking about normal distributions here. Uh, it says here that they have the same <coughs> overall shape. They differ only in their mean and standard deviation. So you're always going to have that same bell curve going to have the same general shape, it's just a matter of what we label on the horizontal axis. The mean is going to be different for a different set of data, the standard deviation is going to be different. Um, some are a little bit taller and skinnier, some are a little bit more spread out, but for the most part they are the same. Now this is what you must know. You've got to commit these numbers to memory. Okay. Um, they are symmetric about the mean, meaning that it's the same on the right side as it is on the left side. Here's the important part. 68% of your values lie within one standard deviation of the mean. Okay, that was very close to the number we just got a minute ago. Um, now, what did we get? 67, I think. Yeah. Um, if we had had more nickels in our sample, it probably would have been closer to 68. Okay, the larger your sample size gets, the more normal your data becomes. Within two standard deviations, you have 95%. And then the majority of the time, between three standard deviations is 99.7% of your data. So it's not quite 100%, but it's pretty darn close. There's just a small little fraction that's outside of three standard deviations in the mean. Those are considered <coughs> extreme values. Okay. So, um, I think, did I give you a graph to do this? No, I don't think I gave you a graph to do this on. 